Hey guys, welcome back to Paper Made Me Do It. This video is going to be all about my current setup for Bible journaling. I use a full year cousin, Hobonichi cousin, and this is actually my second year to use this setup. And I really love the way it's working for me. So I thought I would share with you my entire setup today, give you a little sneak peek into my cousin. And if you stick around to the end, we'll do a quick little uh, journaling page together. So first for my setup, this is a Superior Labor leather pouch. I've used other uh, pouches in the past, but essentially a pen pouch. I use two main pens for this journaling. One is the Hobonichi pen that comes with the planner every year. The second is a Uni Jetstream 0.7 ballpoint pen. So this is essentially the exact same pen as the Hobonichi pen. It's just a slightly, a uh, little bit bolder. So the Hobonichi pen comes in a 0.5. This is a 0.7. I love them both. And then I have a variety of highlighters. Um, I do have two or three colored Papermate Inkjoy gel pens in the 0 0.7 thickness. And then the Zebra Mild Liner highlighters are what I'm using in my journal as well as in my Bible. So I keep this little pouch with me, easy to grab and move from room to room in the house. And then for my actual Bible, I'm using a Crossway journaling Bible. It is in the ESV version. And I just love this book because it has a natural cowhide leather cover, which you can see scratches extremely easily. And I just love the way it shows wear over time, kind of gives it some character. And I marked the book of Matthew, which is what I've been in recently, just to give you an idea of how it looks on the inside, because it is a journaling Bible. It has all of the text in two columns, and then there's extra room on the side where you can add notations. So I just go through here, make my highlights and notes, and this actually coordinates with what I do inside my cousin. So I have a zip cover A5 that was purchased a couple years ago from Hobonichi. This is one of my all-time favorite covers. And on the inside, I just have a couple little stacks of post-it notes, some journaling cards. This was a pretty um, card that was sent to me by a friend. Um, this is a separate graph A5 notebook that I just keep in here for any messy notes that I don't want to go directly into my cousin. And this is the full year Hobonichi Techo 2020 cousin that I'm using. This is what the monthly section looks like. So I just go in for each monthly square and write scripture, verse of the day, so to speak. Now, if a scripture happens to be particularly long and won't fit in one square, then occasionally I do carry over into the next day. Like this is one scripture here that takes up two daily squares. And I do not decorate ahead. So what I do is use this, you know, for content first. And then about mid month this month, I went in and just added some random stickers and washi just to kind of brighten up, decorate the page. But I did make sure that any of the decoration did not cover the remaining squares for the month. So I can go in and continue my daily scripture writing. And then when the months transition into the weeks, I use the weekly section for sermon notes. So this is what I take with me into church on Sunday mornings. And this is what it 
generally looks like when I leave service. I use either the Hobonichi pen or that other Jetstream, uh, whichever I happen to grab. I think this is the point seven based on this uh, text looks a little bolder to me, but I record who is speaking, the date of the sermon, if there's a theme of the sermon, I'll write that at the top, and then I just take notes throughout the sermon. I've learned over time after trying several different things that my mind does not tend to work well in this vertical format. I've tried um, several different ways to use this as it was initially intended in with vertical columns and I just struggled with doing that efficiently. My mind tends to work in a horizontal way. So one thing I love about this weekly section is even though it was set up in vertical columns, the lines are faint enough that they can be just completely ignored, which is what I do. I just treat this every Sunday I open this weekly section and treat it like two blank pages to write my sermon notes. And so I just write um, horizontally across the page. I treat each page as an individual page. And then afterward, I go back after the fact and just add some light decoration, highlight uh, scripture references or important um points or topics, things like that. So decoration is not done in real time. That's done after the fact when I review the actual sermon notes. So that's what I'll be doing um, throughout the rest of 2020. It works out perfectly because each week gives you two pages for that Sunday's sermon notes. And then when the weekly section transitions to the daily section, I'm using the dailies for daily Bible study. And I'm using this in conjunction with an app on my phone. It's just the main um, Bible app that comes with um, the app store for iPhone. It has the little icon that looks like the brown Bible that says Holy Bible on it. And within that app, there are several reading plans. And the one that I'm using for this year is called CCV. And then there's a colon, the Bible in one year. And the word one is in all caps. So I'll link that in the um, description as well if you'd like to check it out. I've tried other Bible in one year apps in the past. And what I really like about this one is it gives you lengthier readings for five consecutive days and then it gives you two days off with no reading so that way throughout the year if you do happen to fall a day or two behind you can use the two days that do not have read reading assignments to play catch up or you know, if you are on track and you just skip over those two days and continue with your daily reading, it allows you to get a little ahead. So instead of having the tendency to run behind throughout the year, it to me feels like it's easier to stay on track. If anything, you can get a little ahead or if you do, you know, um, start to fall behind, having that two days a week with no reading assignments allows you to catch up fairly easily. So I go into that app and I write down the reading assignment for that day on each of the daily spreads. That is something that I tend to do a little in advance. I'll go ahead and write down the reading assignments for maybe three, four, even five days in advance, just so this book is prepped. And as I go through the app and the reading assignments, I will pull out my Bible and go through it in conjunction with that app. So I'll go to the passages that I'm going over for that day, do any highlighting or note taking in my actual Bible. And then from that, 
I will use what I highlighted in my Bible or any notes that came to mind to use as the content that goes in this book. So this is almost like how I interpreted the study, what I felt like the main points were. And I do it just like the other sections where initially it's just writing. And then after the fact, maybe, you know, once or twice a week, I'll kind of go back into a backlog and do some light decoration. So the point of this book to me is definitely more about content and the focus is not so much decoration. So the decoration is almost honestly like an afterthought for this particular cousin, but I like it that way. I'm trying to keep, you know, the content as the focus. This is just kind of a sneak peek into what my dailies look like. And then even after I write the main points, I do like to go back and kind of emphasize um, main points even within this. So it's like I'm looking at everything two to three times when it's all said and done to really soak up um, the focus of the text. So this is an example of the app having a reading assignment for one, two, three, four, five days in a row. And then there are no reading assignments for two days. And then it resumes for five more consecutive days. So this is about the only thing that's different from what I did last year because I used a different app last year that didn't have the two free days each week. But I'm kind of liking this. I'm leaving the two days blank and continuing on the proper day. So I happen to start on January 1st this year. So January 8th is actually the eighth day of the app, if that makes sense. So as I get to those two free days, I'm leaving those pages blank. And what I'm thinking about doing is using them for more artistic Bible journaling, maybe doing a sketch or a theme of some sort, practicing some hand lettering. Um, this is what I'll come back to in just a second and kind of break it in, so to speak, and do a little journaling spread on one of these pages. So I thought about doing uh, like decorative Bible journaling. Maybe uh, what I plan to do today is a quick gratitude list. I thought about even writing down specific prayers at that time. If y'all have any other suggestions of what I could do with these two blank pages, because they will fall on a weekly basis, um, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your suggestions if you have any other ideas. So these are some other notes and then I've just gone back and highlighted the main points of my notes and then for the minimal decoration that I am doing I'm going back these highlighters are the same ones that I use in my Bible the zebra mile liner I'm going back and just adding this was just a little hand lettering but I'm adding some stickers and washi the stickers that I currently have, I had purchased forever ago and need to be using them. These were part of the Happy Planner or Me and My Big Ideas um, line that you can get like at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And they had two, apparently. And like I say, I bought these a long time ago, so they may have more options now that are updated but both of these sticker books were labeled as faith as the topic so I'm using stickers out of those books as well as um, the occasional strip of washi so that is how I'm using my cousin for Bible journaling this year I hope this um, inspires some of you if you have either if you want to dedicate an entire cousin like I am to use as a Bible journal I think it just makes a perfect book um, you could probably incorporate some of these ideas into a cousin that you may use for other purposes as well and just use a certain section of the page and maybe not an entire page in the dailies and let's do a quick little journaling spread 
I will um, have some music going in the background if you want to pull out your supplies and journal with me that would be awesome but I'm just gonna do a quick little gratitude spread on this page and I will go ahead and thank you now in advance for watching if you haven't already please consider subscribing to my channel I will see you soon bye guys